Hey guys, I am ecstatic and I had to share with you. I'm already getting feedback about the book. I'm getting people that are telling me, I, I'm so excited, getting people that are telling me that they've already read through it. It's only 100 pages, not a really long book, but they've already read through it and already got some value out of it. If you know, if you've come to one of my events, you know that I'm all about value. So here's the deal. I wanted to share some stuff with you. I think you're going to enjoy this. This is for a lot of people. I've been having more and more people reach out asking me about starting a business. I just read an article too, I think it was in the Wall Street Journal, that a lot of people are looking into entrepreneurship, are looking to start a new business. That's exciting stuff. So what I did in our book, which is called Get Online, Your Guide to Starting and Growing a Bigger, Better Biz, we actually talk about some different types of businesses you could start. Now, I want to show you these low overhead businesses. What that means, they don't take a lot of time or money to get off the ground. So these are businesses where you don't have to have a huge bank account in order to become an entrepreneur. I wanted to show you a couple of them and give you some stories. So first off, we've got landscaping. Listen, there are tons of landscapers. And if you go on to Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, you literally can find snow plows for cheap. Up here in the Northeast, snow is coming, winter is coming, and we know that we're going to need snow plows or snow removal. We're also going to need people that will actually do a fall cleanup right now before Thanksgiving so our yards are pretty. These are things you could do very easily. Now, I talk about in the book about one of my uncles who started his landscaping business with just a truck and a couple mowers. Well, I actually have two uncles that started landscaping empires in towns next to each other in Massachusetts, and they both still have a healthy, big landscaping business. And I'll tell you, they just started with humble beginnings, a lawnmower, some rakes, and then they started hiring. This is something you can do by yourself and grow your team. We've got house painting, same thing. All you need are some brushes, some paint trays, and you need to know where to get the paint. And also you need to know how to paint. You should know how to prime. You should know how to paint properly. Don't do a crummy job. Great way to start making some money. You could be a handyman or handywoman. Hey, listen, I've actually been helping two handymen start their business. One in Tampa, Florida, one here in Manchester, New Hampshire. Both of them have similar dreams. They want to actually grow so that they have a team to manage. That can be done. All you have to do, though, is just have some fix-it know-how, know how to do some electrical work, know how to paint, again, know how to install appliances or faucets or fixtures. If you have that kind of knowledge, then you can go and become a handyman or handywoman. Here's the other thing. Depending on your state, you can get a license. Having a license behind you and being a licensed handy person actually works to your benefit. People will trust you more. Take it a step further. Ensure yourself. Then you start branding. You start building. You have your logo. You start putting on your shirt. You hand out magnets and cards. Growing a handy person business is not hard. It's just a lot of meticulous steps that you have to take in order to build your brand. Another one for you, house cleaning. There are some people, and maybe you're that kind of person, that loves cleaning. You love the idea of taking something that's dirty or just not that polished and making it bright and clean. In fact, I'm working with a house cleaning company right now to build their brand, to get a new logo, to rebuild their website, and helping them to make a name for themselves in their area. Now, all you need to do is make sure that you get good referrals, good reviews. People start referring you to their friends, their neighbors, before you know it, you can have a nice little house cleaning business that's pulling in a lot of money. So I didn't know about dog walking until my mom told me that she was paying someone to walk her yellow lab. And it's a legitimate business. And then I found out that my cousin is doing that as one of her businesses. She actually has two. So she does dog walking during the day and then she does pet sitting at night. Pet sitting is like babysitting, but if you like dogs, cats, or animals. So my cousin will not only pet sit dogs, she pet sits cats, lizards, snakes. I mean, if you're an animal lover, this is right up your alley. The last one I wanted to show you is the idea of becoming a virtual assistant. With so many people working from home, with so many people starting up a business, a lot of them are finding that they need someone to help them take care of the minutiae, the details, the day-to-day, -day, the emails, all that stuff. 
In fact, my brother-in-law runs two barbershops. He just hired a personal assistant to help him run that day-to-day so that he can think more about the strategy, the marketing, those types of things. Now, being a virtual assistant, you have to be good on the computer. You need to have your skills so that you know how to do internet research, data entry. You need to be good at things like Google Workspace and other types of tools. But if you have that know-how, if you have a good eye for detail, you can definitely become a virtual assistant. These people are making anywhere from 15 bucks an hour up to $45, $50 an hour, depending on their experience and what services they provide. So if you're sitting at home right now and you're trying to think of what kind of business am I going to start, those are some great ideas for you to start with. Plenty more in the book. I actually give you a ton of ideas for starting your business, whether it's a low investment and low cost, or if you do have the budget, putting in a little bit more money for a business that has more room to grow profitable and grow faster. Either way, whether you're starting a business or you have a business and you want to learn how to market it, promote it, and grow that bigger, better, small business, I want you to read the book. There is a lot of good value in here. Listen, I started my business 10 years ago. Now, 10 years ago, I knew nothing about marketing. I knew very little. I didn't even know what SEO was or how to do it. Now I'm teaching people on a national scale how to do SEO. If I can learn that kind of stuff, you can learn how to grow your business. And this book is meant for you. It's a guide to help you actually grow. It's giving you curated resources. It's giving you checklists so that you can start your business on the right foot. My goal here, I want you to read through these 100 pages, and it's a very easy read, by the way, and I want you to learn, I want you to take notes, I want you to ask questions, and like I said at the beginning of this video, give me feedback. If there's something that's missing, let me know. If there's something that was a light bulb moment, let me know. I wrote this for you. So guys, I hope you enjoy the book. If you have friends or family who are looking at starting a business or who own a business, share the link with them too. Share the love. Until next time, stay well, stay healthy, and here's to your success.